John Burko, current Speaker of the House of Commons, somebody who has repeatedly said after many, many years he'll step down the next year only to prolong his Speaker Premiership. Speakership? Doesn't matter. He oversees procedure in Parliament and has done so for about a decade. I would argue he's done a relatively good job if you ignore the bullying accusations and the fact that many believe he is trying to stonewall the government's attempts at leaving the EU, whether it be by selecting amendments that intentionally create more issues, or because in a tiebreaker he has cast a vote in favour of the opposition on the subject of an amendment for Brexit. Many people believe the reason he has delayed his departure is because of his attempts to try and derail the government's leaving plans for the EU, with him saying he'll stay until Christmas rather than standing down in the summer. But last year he was planning to step down this summer, so now. To support the claim that he is trying to stonewall Brexit, recently, what is more commonly known as the Parliamentary Bible, written by Thomas Erskine in 1844, was published and made freely available online for people to look at. I may next week make a video on it, because that is in and of itself quite interesting. This parliamentary rulebook makes up a bunch of legislative laws that forms part of the UK's unwritten constitution. Commons Speaker John Burke did in fact say that parliamentary practice and procedure does not exist in a vacuum, which is a lie. It is in fact the lifeblood of the day-to-day -day work of members, as recent months have starkly brought into focus. All too often, parliamentary rules are seen as a Byzantine mystery, only understood by a select few. Therefore, I am delighted that Erskine May, the venerable Bible of Parliamentary Procedures, is to be made freely available to all to help develop a wider understanding of how their elected representatives work. Which actually is a brilliant idea, because many people don't think MPs do anything, but I've watched enough select committees and hearings to realise they're busy bees. I just don't support the incredibly long holidays they are supposedly getting. Critics of recent actions by John Burko include David Starkey, the historian, who has said that what has happened with the referendum is the first time that Parliament has consciously and deliberately been led by its Speaker, and by its leading MPs, reversed the notion of parliamentary representation. It seems to be an act of unprecedented folly. It's sort of an act of institutional suicide. As I said, Burko calls the whole notion of unwritten constitution into question. I personally don't care. But I'm very interested to see Thomas Erskine's parliamentary rulebook. That will be very interesting to read. But to go back to the EU referendum leaving thing, more that can be added to the fire that Burko is trying to stop us from leaving, we could start with the fact that he did block a third meaningful vote on Theresa May's deal. Granted, didn't support the deal, but he stopped it. But he did allow another vote on whether Parliament should have control of the parliamentary timetable three times. He allowed it. In fact, he allowed many different things to happen on multiple occasions. When you look at the amendments that were voted on repeatedly, the only thing that changed when they were defeated were the names of those that submitted them. And I'm referring to the multiple times that second referendum came up, multiple times a people's vote came up, multiple times that Remain came up, multiple times single market and customs union came up. They were all voted against, but he permitted them, which shows a bias that I think must be addressed. Adding to this, Dominic Grieve, ardent Ramona, has been trying to starve the Prime Minister, the next one no less, of preparing for no deal by attempting to stop them from having access to funds to prepare for no deal, or if no deal happens, from spending money on no deal. This is quite interesting, because while I have said that I believe Burko has done everything he can to stonewall leaving, he blocked this, which I find to be quite interesting, because it contradicts a lot of his behaviour. Every day in Parliament when there are debates and votes to be had, the Speaker will select amendments to be voted on, bills to be voted on, so that they can either be taken to the next step or be ratified. This amendment is a very much remoning amendment, one that had cross-party support, a significant amount of support, no less. All in all, I find Burko to be quite odd, because his actions up until now have all appeared to be, I want to make this as difficult for the government as possible, which is fine, but by doing it, contradict myself by allowing many different amendments that are the same as previous amendments to be voted on again and again and again, 
but not the Prime Minister's deal, when the only change is the name on the slip. And then today, or yesterday even, to block Dominic Greaves' amendment that would stop the government from having access to money in the event of no deal and to prepare for no deal. Which they should. They should prepare. So why Dominic Grieve wants to do that? Well, it's not exactly a mystery, but it is interesting nonetheless.